Hi, this is Primary Cinema, and I finally got the chance to see Miranda July's Gajillionaire after its release was delayed due to the pandemic. I'm a huge fan of her movies, but the prolonged wait to see her latest one caused me to explore her extensive work outside of film, such as her fiction writing, performance art, and various installation pieces. One project that really grabbed my attention was her short-lived social media app, Somebody. I found Somebody to exist at a really interesting intersection of a lot of different cultural and technological advancements. So for this video, I'm taking a brief detour away from the cinema to fill you in on the extracurricular activities of one of my favourite directors and artists. I hope you enjoy. Miranda July's Somebody was the world's least efficient instant messaging service. Unlike typical messaging apps, when a user sent a message to somebody, the content was not delivered straight to the intended recipient, but instead to the somebody user closest to them. It was then the responsibility of this third party to locate the recipient, deliver the message by identifying themselves as the sender, and perform the script along with any included stage directions. Here's an example from July's short film, made to promote the app. Halo? Yeah? It's me, Jessica. I so totally love you. I just, I can't, I just can't be your girlfriend anymore. I can't. It's not anything you did, you're perfect. You're perfect. I just need some space. I just need some space. That's okay. Alright, okay. Yeah, yeah. So of course, somebody wasn't very practical. In fact, only 25% of the messages sent through the app managed to be delivered. Despite this, it did garner up to 10,000 daily users. But July, and likely most of somebody's users, did not see somebody's value as being a social media platform or texting app, but rather as a far-reaching public art project inciting performance and conversation. July has previously shown an interest in how the internet mediates our human connections. Her debut feature film, Me and You and Everyone We Know, has a famous storyline involving a child communicating with an anonymous woman via an online chat room. And her previous project, We Think Alone, saw July release the personal email messages of various celebrities. Somebody's GPS-enabled features were preceded by the locative media art pieces pioneered by groups like Blast Theory, whose early 2000 works, Can You See Me Now?, and Uncle Roy all around you, saw people navigate a geographic area and perform tasks at the direction of digital users. It was also indebted to the instructional art made famous by artists such as Yoko Ono. While Ono, in her book Grapefruit, would instruct readers to walk all over the city with an empty baby carriage or hit the wall with their head, July's app went further and allowed participants to both instruct users on how to behave and also perform the actions set out by others. July's work is therefore notable for allowing its audience to participate on both sides of the instructional art equation. Somebody also has an interesting relationship with Ben Russell's seminal Headmap Manifesto. Headmap, written in 1999, predicted much of the locative media that developed in the early 21st century. Somebody in particular brings to life Russell's vision of people within a mile of each other who have never met, stop and organise spontaneously to help with some task or other and somebody directly reckoned with the tension between Russell's utopian, grassroots, artist-led predictions, and the highly commodified and commercialised reality of locative media today. While Russell saw the dawn of locative media as an opportunity for a whole range of human-centred conversations, in the intervening years, GPS tracking has, of course, been predominantly used by major tech companies and governments as a means of surveillance. This has led to art historian Andres Brokman to label locative media as an avant-garde of the society of control, and others to criticise located media artists as at best critically oblivious to the military and consumerist origins of the technology they use. While the initial rollout of Somebody was bankrolled by high-end women's fashion brand Miu Miu, maintaining the app required continuous investment. July met with potential investors, but was uncomfortable with their focus on monetization and advertising. So instead of selling the app or turning it into a fully-fledged startup, 
she opted to shut down somebody roughly a year after it first launched. Explaining her decision, July said, Then suddenly it's a other company, and it's almost a betrayal of the original idea. One that was actually a reaction to all those other things. Somebody is one individual woman's response to what she's feeling in response to her phone. And that's such a unique, a special thing for that to happen. July's decision to shutter the app rather than turn it into a commercial enterprise is therefore a rejection of the increasing commodification and intrusions of privacy prevalent in today's locative media landscape. The death of somebody may well prove that Russell's optimistic conceptualization of a world changed by artistic and altruistic application of locative media is not viable in our current political and economic climate. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. More videos are coming soon, I promise. And they'll even be about movies and everything. Bye for now.